Amen. Somebody say, I want to be free. And so the Bible tells us that he whom the Son sets free is free indeed, right? And so oftentimes uh, what happens is that God has done his part. Now it's time for us to do our part. And so it's halftime. We're halfway through the year. Now, I was trying to find a really good motivational video, right, uh, that most of the time during a football game, a soccer game, a basketball game, and, uh, and, and the coach gets into the locker room and gives a really, really good motivational speech. But I couldn't find one that didn't have a whole lot of profanity. And so uh, I am your coach. It's halftime. I will not be using any profanity, maybe. I'm, I'm just kidding. That was a good place for y'all to laugh. Y'all didn't help me out on that time. So we are halfway through. This gives us a good opportunity to look back at some of the hiccups, some of the hang-ups, some of the things that have not gone so well, and not get stuck at that place. What happens in our life oftentimes is that we get stuck when we begin to look back. We look back at all the things that have happened. We look at all of the, the issues, all of the chaos, all of the disorder, all of the dysfunction, and instead of being able to use it as fuel for the future, we wind up getting stuck and not realizing that that stuck is not a destination. It's a place of transition. You look back so that then you can look forward. How many of y'all have had a rough year thus far, right? How many of y'all have had some hangups thus far? How many of y'all have had some things happen that you're like, I wish that that did not happen and I hope that it never happens again. And so don't get stuck at that place. Don't fall into a place of, oh my gosh, the rest of the year is a wash. No, you still have six more months to turn this puppy around. This is a great opportunity to reflect, not to get stuck. All right. And so uh, I know that uh, when the year was getting ready to kick off, I don't know about you, but I get really pumped up when the new year is about to come in the mix. Like, I'm just kind of like, there's this expectation that's building up, and I can't wait for the countdown. And we normally do a big old celebration here, and all of the, bah, 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 the noisemakers and the countdown and the music and all of the excitement. And a lot of times, the new year will kick off, and you realize that the same thing that was going on in 2021 is now taking place in 2022. Nothing changed. What should have changed was me, but if we don't put in the work, you are going to continue to experience the same things that you were experienced before. Change is not change until it's changed. Now, even birthdays, we can have the same experience during our birthday, right? Some of y'all celebrate all month long. Y'all be walking around with money on your shirts, and it be like, oh, happy birthday. And it ain't to two weeks, so why are you asking for money right now? And you celebrate and celebrate, and you put your cash out. How many of y'all like to put your cash out? No, nobody's going to raise their hand like, you ain't going to call me out like that. I'm... I told my son, I'm like, I'm like, I told him, it's your birthday, put your cash app on there. And we were waiting, you know, the cash app goes cha-ching, and it never went cha-ching. <laughs> but there's this expectation that happens, your birthday, the new year, you're expecting for something new to happen, but then uh, uh, it rolls around, the new year comes, the uh, birthday comes and and it becomes quickly deflated why because your expectation was on the wrong thing there are times where we experience a job loss and, and we're thinking to ourselves I got to get a job and months go by and the job doesn't come and you're you're waiting for something new or 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 how about friendships that have been divided or how about transition after transition problem after problem set back after set back and you're thinking to yourself I got to let go of this year so that I can grab on to the new year but if we don't make the adjustments in our life 2022 will look exact or 2023 will look exactly like 2022 and maybe your 2022 looks exactly like your 2021 so something has got to change somebody say something's got to change because this thing looks like it is a cycle over and over and over and it's the same thing and the same issues and the same problems and maybe some new faces but they got the same stuff going on that 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so over and over, our life is like this cycle. Something has to change, and I'm going to let you know today what that change needs to be. Somebody say, teach me. All right, we're going to see by the time this is all said and done if you're ready to listen to what the word is today. And so we're going to go to the book, the, the, uh, the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 15, and we're going to hang out there today. Is that all right? And so it starts off on verse 4. It says, but when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. So what can we learn just by that verse alone? That birthdays and New Year's do not bring change to your life. It is seeking the Lord and in the seeking of the Lord, he is not that hard to find, y'all. He is the heavens of the, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Have you ever seen, have you ever played hide and go seek with somebody big? Like they're tall, they're broad, they're big, y'all grown folk and you're trying to find a place to hide and you think you're hiding but we could see you your shadow your body your butt is sticking out and you you are really not God is the creator of the heavens and the earth we tend to act like God is really hard to find uh, uh he he's in front of you every day he is behind you in front of you all around you he is a uh, uh, present everywhere he is all powerful he is all knowing all we have to do is seek him out and he will be found don't start a phone ministry don't call Riri, Ray Ray, Pookie none of them don't do it God is saying seek me in your trouble and in your turmoil and I shall be found so whew, I don't have to worry about waiting for the, the clock to strike midnight and I don't have to wait for the new birthday. I had a birthday this year, and I posted, I'm guilty as charged. 45, it's a new me, the new G. I ain't looking back. It's, I should have made a rap song. A lot of that stuff was rhyming. And I, I'm going to go harder than ever. I'm going to go stronger than ever. And let me let y'all in on the little secret. As you get older, <laughs> and you get slower. And when you wake up out of bed, it sounds like a bowl of Rice Krispie cereal, snack, crackle, pop. And so I said, it's a new me. And the next day I got out of bed and I, I felt 45. <laughs> All jokes. But nothing changed. Why? Because it's not in the new birthday. And it's not in the new year. But it's having a new mindset. And we are halfway through the year. There's truth in that. But we got to get to a place of understanding that until we realize that we have to put in some work, then we're going to continue in the same pattern over and over and over. We are in partnerships with the heaven. And I promise you that God is not going to bless mess and God is not going to make bring you up out of situations if you're going to get yourself back into that situation. God is looking for people to show up and to seek him and to be ready to step into the new that he has for you. You can't step into something new until you stepped out of something old. And so if God is trying to bless you with the sun outside, you'll never see the sun outside if you never leave inside your home. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That is a good place to shout amen. Can I teach y'all some church etiquette? When something good is said, you clap. And when something awesome is said, you shout amen. And when something is really, really good, you shake your handkerchief. Anybody got a handkerchief? Anybody? Nobody got a handkerchief? You got a napkin, uh, anything, yo, just don't wave your purse at me like you're going to throw it at me. We got a handkerchief right here, all right? We're going to give her and de designate her as the handkerchief, right? And so if I say something good, y'all just yell handkerchief and she'll, that's your job, all right? <laughs> so, so the deal is that tomorrow is never promised and we have to do all that we can to walk in alignment with God's word. And so the reason why some things have not changed in your life is because you have not changed, and God is looking for people that he can work through. Do you believe it? Are you going to be the person that God works through? And so we get down to verse 5, and it says, And in those times there was no peace. Sounds like a day like today. To, uh, to the one who sent out, nor to the one who came in. But great turmoil 
was on all of the inhabitants of the land. In other words, everyone that lived in the land, they were experiencing some turmoil. And so verse 6 says, So nation was destroyed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. In other words, God was bringing the adversity into the picture. God was bringing turmoil into the land. There was a lot of confusion. People were fighting one another. It didn't matter who you were. God was allowing things to take place. Why? Because the people were far from God. Now, God is looking for people that are in relationship with him, not people that know of God or know that there is a God, but people that are in relationship with God. I know certain folk because I see them on TV, and, and I know that there are uh, certain people on social media by looking at their posts. I know of them, and I know that they exist, but I don't know them. And so I am not in relationship with them, and it is much the same with God. We know that there's a God. God, how many of you know that there's a God? Every hand should be up in the, in the sky. And how many of you know uh, in, uh, or believe in God? Every hand should be raised in the sky. But how many of you are in relationship with God? Now, that's where the rubber meets the road because we must have a relationship with God and know him. What does a relationship look like? Well, let's look at a natural relationship. Uh, does relationship require communication? Now, does relationship require spending time together, right? Does relationship require resting on one another as a pillar? Does relationship require trust? Uh, am, am I making sense? And so are we in relationship with God? And it, you, either you are or you're, there really isn't any in between. But I love what the prophet begins to speak to the king. And so it's so encouraging to understand that if you are rightly related with God, that you will reap a reward. Verse 7 tells us this, but you be strong and do not let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. And so there is a reward despite the things that are going on around us. We don't live our lives based on what's going on around us. We live our lives based on the fact that we know that God is with us and he is for us. And he is working all things for the good of those who love him. How many of y'all love him? So we are in a time now where there is a lot of turmoil and there's a lot of dysfunction and there are a lot of issues. Don't believe me? Let me visit with you after you fill your car up with some fuel. You are not going to be a happy camper. And so my prayer is that in this time that there's a lack of peace, that there's mass shootings, that there's police brutality, global wars, abortion issues, activist movement, that we as a people of God will not grow weary in doing good because there will come a time where God will reward you for your effort. Thank you very much. Y'all are learning good church etiquette. Hallelujah. Somebody's listening. If you're at home and you got a handkerchief, go get one and just wave it. And so we're, we're, God is looking for people that will push through, that will stay consistent, that will be committed, that will not grow weary, that will allow themselves to operate and function at a full level of confidence. But we are at a place in our time where we come to God uh, bent over rather than straight up and wrecked. We come to God as beggars. There's a time back in a biblical age that when a beggar would go and ask for money, it's not like the ones on the street corner. You see them now. They have all of these creative signs. I saw one the other day that said, I came to planet Earth on a spaceship and we ran out of gas. Can you help me get gas for my spaceship so that I can return home? And so... 
Beggars of that time did not have signs on cardboard boxes. They actually came over, bent over with their heads down and in a posture where they were broken with their hand out and just walking. They wouldn't even look at the people that they were asking for money. And all they would ask for is alms, alms. If you can give me some alms because I am in need and I lack. God does not want us to come to him that way. God is wanting us to come straight up shoulders back head up coming to the throne room of heaven and saying God this is where I'm at this is what's going on this is what I need I need for you to come through your word says that you are my provider that you are my healer that you are my strong tower that you are my banner that you will keep me up when I don't want to be kept up that you will restore my mind that you will restore my marriage God I'm coming to you bold and confident and that is what God is needing and as a result of your boldness and your confidence, then God says, now I will reward you because of your obedience and how you're coming to me. Don't come to me all broken up and come to me all uh, bent backwards. Listen, God is looking for people that will rise up and and act a little right. We try to act like we're coming to church as a favor to God. Well, I went to church Sunday, God. You could do it. And I put a little change in the bucket God I know you could do it I, God I need provision in my life I put I put a quarter in the in the tithing the bucket we're not doing any favors to God because we come to church we're not doing God a favor because they, all of that is more for you than it is for him and God is saying is there a people that I can trust with my provision is there a people that I can trust in my reward because when God rewards God don't reward in just a little a little bit of lint from his pocket God's the heavens ain't bankrupt y'all God is looking for people that he can bring down a blessing on a reward and that blessing some of y'all thinking like yeah I could use a new car and I could use a new house listen blessing in the heavens is not like the blessing that we're looking for y'all sometimes that blessing is a gift We forget the gifts that God puts on the inside of us. See, we have a bunch of folks out here with a bunch of gifts that come and watch all the gifts on the stage. But when are we going to engage the gifts that God has given to us so that we can be in partnership with him? See, some of us complain about our kids not acting right. Maybe maybe they're learning it from you. Handkerchief. I'll call the handkerchief on that one. And the king begins to respond to the words of the prophet. You know, my prayer is that God send prophets, real prophets, like you you sent in the times of the Old Testament that will go and set an order and make people straight. Listen, not prophet liars and not folks that are putting their cash app all on social media, but a prophet that walks in and says, this is the word of the Lord, and, and, and then we are able to follow what is being spoken because we understand that there are words directly from the throne room of heaven, but a lot of times we have everything backwards than what we would consider a prophet. If we had a prophet of that time, perhaps one of those individuals could walk right up to the White House and everybody in the White House would begin to listen to the word of the Lord because it is the word of the Lord. We get to verse 8. And it says, and when Asa, the king, heard these words and the prophecy of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. He was motivated at that time. He said, I've heard something from God, and I'm tired of the famine. I'm tired of the dry seasons in my life. I'm tired of the disorder. I'm tired of the issues. I'm tired of city fighting over cities. I'm tired of every nation crumbling down. I'm tired of all of the mess, and I am going to bring to order. I've heard the word of the Lord, and now I must respond. It is much the same in your life. How many of y'all are tired of the dysfunction? How many of y'all are tired? 
tired of the cyclic behavior. How many of y'all are tired of the division that the enemy brings into the mix? And so here is the word of the Lord for your life. Bring God into the mix of all that it is that you're doing and watch God begin to turn all of it around. Then we get down to 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12 through 15. And it says, then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death. Whether small or great, whether men or women. Now we won't be practicing that verse here today. The verse 14 says, then they took an oath before the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting and trumpets and ram's horns. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their soul. And he was found by them, and the Lord gave them all rest. Isn't it amazing? What God will do when you seek him. Isn't it amazing what peace God will bring into your household when you actually allow him in? Isn't it amazing how order will begin to become established in your mind and in your relationship when he becomes the forefront of it all? But it requires a covenant and it requires an oath. It requires you to tell God, listen, God, I'm looking after you. I'm seeking after you. I'm getting it right. I'm making a change in my life. I'm not going to continue in the same pattern, in the same way, in the same direction. I'm not letting the same people or the same addictions to take over my life. I am making an oath to you today and listen to this listen to this listen to this God if I don't do it right this time take my life no handkerchief <laughs> see because what happens is that all of y'all and all of us we began to shout on the first one I'm gonna change God I'm gonna be different God it's a new start and a new beginning but what happens in our life is this that that we are more trying than saying we're gonna do and so we're saying it, but we have a hard time believing it at times. It comes up out of our mouth, and maybe the emotion of it may move you just a little bit, but the sincerity of it all is, if you really mean it and you're making a commitment and an oath to God, put some skin in the game and say, God, if I don't do it right, then take me out. Because some of us take advantage of God's grace. And we remind God, God, you said seven times seven is when you're going to, uh, 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 that you're going to forgive me for. And you're going to throw all of the memories of my sin into the lake of fire. We call God on all of that stuff. But how about making a note to put some skin in the game and be real? There's a great, great, great theologian. Some of you know him as Yoda. He says this, do or do not, there is no try. Do or do not, there is no try. Thank you for the handkerchief. Y'all need a handkerchief on, on this side. Y'all, I don't know where your relationship lies with the Lord, but she's driving the force over here on this side. Y'all are doing good. You guys over here need a hanky. And so in all of my studies of ministry and going to a theological seminary and being a tongue-talking Pentecostal Holy Spirit filled with fire from the top of my head to the tips of my toe. No pastoring for many years and planting many churches. I have a very, 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 very deep, deep counsel for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Just do it. Stop trying. Oh, they got it together. They got three over here. What? 
<laughs> That's so good. Y'all getting it. Y'all getting it. And so, so often we, we are trying. Well, I'm going to try to do better. I'm going to try to let the addiction go. And I'm going to try and I'm going to try. And God has said, I'm just looking for people that say, I'm going to do. Because the moment that you say, I'm going to do, the accountability is in there. And here's the deal. It's got to come up out of your mouth. Because while it's in your head, nobody else knows. And so there's no accountability. So if you don't show up, nobody knows. If you don't do it, nobody knows. But the moment that you tell somebody, this is what I'm going to do. This is my commitment. There's a level of accountability and what you don't do that means you lied so how many liars do we have in the house I'm glad some of y'all raise your hand if you've ever lied you're a liar it's simple how many of y'all want to continue to be liars then that's where the commitment comes in and we stop saying, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to be a better husband. No, you're going to be a better husband. Yeah. I'm going to try to be a better Christian. No, no, there's no trying. You're going you're gonna to be a better believer and a better Christian. I'm going to try to be a better father. No, you're going to be a better father. When you begin to, to say what you're going to do and then believe and understand that when you don't do it, you become a liar at that point. There's no sugarcoating it. Well, Pastor G, those are strong words. Don't be calling me a liar. I'm all offended. No, there's no, there's no way to sugarcoat this. There's no way around it. There's no, uh, you're, you're a, uh, what's the word, a fibber. Does that make you feel better? No, a liar. <laughs> we got to call it for what it is. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1 through 2. We go back to the very beginning of the scripture. It says, now the spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. This was the prophet. And he went out to meet Asa. He said, hear me, all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. Ooh, that's so good, y'all. Can y'all help me read that? Listen, let's read it again. And he went out to me, Asa, and said to him, Hear me, Asa, all of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while... The Lord is with you while... God, I, I, it's been a long time since I heard from God. Has he heard from you in a while? It's been a long time since the Lord has blessed me. Have you blessed the Lord in a while? Come on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's been a while since God has shown up in my life. Have you been showing up? We love the scripture. God works all things out for the good of those who love him. And I love him. Well, now let's turn that thing around. Are we working all things out for the good of heaven? Are we working it out? We want God with us, but are you with <gasps> It says, if you seek him, this is kind of like the hide and go seek again, right? There's the hide and go seek. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, oh, yeah. there goes one of those words that we really don't want to call it for what it is, right? Forsake, like, ah, oh, no, it's just I got a little busy. I got a little tied up. You know, life happens, Pastor G. There's things that occur. You know, you know, my mama and my kids and my baby mama, they just weren't acting right. You know, my finances were a little, you know, a little difficult. So I had to, you know, these are, you know, Pastor G, you, you know, you know. You know a little bit of Spanish. You're like, tu sabes. No, I don't know. Because we want God with us every day. So guess what we got to do? We got to be with him. And when we want from God, guess what? We got to do for God. And we won't want to hear from him. Guess what? We got to allow him to hear from us. This is not God do. This is us do. And God begins to uh, uh, come into relationship with us. And through our following of him and constantly seeking him out, then he shows up and says, you called me? Here I am. But oftentimes we use his name more in vain than we do when we actually need him. Jesus. Yes. And nothing to follow. Half time. Somebody say half time. Halftime. See, you now as I was further reflecting, I get to the scripture of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 
And this is one that we can all relate to. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added unto us. See, we like the all things added unto us. How many of y'all like the all things added unto us part? But we forget that first part that says, but seek first. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. <laughs> Watch this. Y'all not going to like me after today. You're going to be like, that church. <laughs> seek first and his righteousness. Righteousness is attached. These are legal terms. Righteousness is attached to justice. And so in justice, that means that like a judge, how many of y'all, when you go to court, right, and, and, and somebody did wrong against you, you want the judge to make a judgment to correct the issue because that person did wrong and they should have consequences, right? And so here's the deal. When you're seeking God and his righteousness and his judgment, that means that when you do wrong, you ought to expect God to love you enough to bring correction. Woo. And so how do we seek first the kingdom of God? Number one, confess and repent. And don't be like, God, you know what I did yesterday. No, you better call it out for what it is. God, you know that needle that I had in my arm yesterday? God, I want to turn away from that. God, you know I put my eye too long yesterday on something I shouldn't have. And God, forgive me for that lust. On and on and on. You know what you've done. And it's time to come to God and say, God, I confess and I repent. How many of you want order in your life? This is where we start. The second thing is submit all emotions and anxiety over to the Lord. That's a tough one. Because everything is going good until somebody make you mad. And then we buy shirts like I'm saved, not soft. <laughs> or something happens and, and now we go into a place of depression and, and sadness. You cannot trust your emotions. Submit them to God. Otherwise, you find yourself at step one again. God, I did it again. And then you wonder why there's this cyclic chaos in your life. You lack control of your emotions. We go into manic behavior. The root word manic comes from, or, or the, the maniac, manic is the root word of the word maniac. And so we begin to have these behaviors based on our emotion and a lot of the things that happen in your life are self-induced but we could turn them over to God and say God I repent you tell them you name it name it do it you don't have to be around people some of y'all be like I repent for it. make sure there's no cameras around because y'all don't want nobody to know the mess that y'all done And then submit your emotions. God, I give you my emotions. Because you can't trust yourself when you're really happy. You can't trust yourself when you're sad. You can't trust yourself when you're really angry. And so just give it to God. Now, I'm not saying be this emotionless individual that's just kind of like you have no. No, you're a human being. And there's a, a, such a thing as a righteous anger. But don't allow anger to cause you to sin. Change needs to be brought to our life. It's halftime. It's halftime. And if you want anything different than what you've known up to this point, it's time to begin that you put in the work. Who's going to be putting in the work from this day forward? You don't have to wait to midnight. You don't have to wait till your birthday. You don't have to wait till a particular day or for you to have a particular thing. Today, you could begin to make these changes in your life. Every head bowed and every eye closed in this place.
today, if you're here or online and you're saying, you know, I need this Jesus that you're talking about. I, I'm tired of doing things my way. I'm ready to give my life to Jesus as, and him come into my life as Lord and Savior. If you've never made that decision, but you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior on today, would you just step up your hand right where you are? If you're ready to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, if there's anyone in this room, just step up your hand. Maybe you're online. You want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. If that's you, just let us know today that you're making that decision. The second call is this. Is there anyone in the house or online that's saying, you know what? I've fallen away. But I'm ready to come on back home. I'm ready to recommit myself. I'm ready to rededicate myself. And I realize that the enemy may try to bring shame into my life. But we cancel that assignment of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm ready to come on back home. If that's you, just step up your hand right where you are. No shame, no repercussions, no consequences to you. Only you making a conscious decision to say, I'm seeking after God. And I know that if I seek after him, he will be found. I see that hand in the back. Thank you so much, sir. I see that hand. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone here that would say, you know what, I'm ready to come on back home. I see that hand right here in the front. Thank you so much, sir. God, I pray for those individuals that have raised their hand. God, I pray and I plead with you, Father, that you would just allow their hearts to fall in love with you deeper than any time before, my God. Lord, we just read in your word that if we seek you, we will find you. You're not hard to be found, God. And so today, God, we seek after you. And we say, God, have your way in our lives. And we commit ourselves to you on today. We're thankful, God, that you don't leave us and you don't forsake us. You don't leave us to just die. But God, you wait for us so that you can give us life. And today we pray for those that have raised their hand and make a commitment. We thank you, God, and we honor you on today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone says, amen. Bless you guys. You guys, thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Listen, if you have any prayer needs, we would love to pray with you. So send them on over. Our hope and desire is that the message was an impact to you and your children and your entire household. We take our motto here seriously. Why do life alone? Listen, there's no reason why you should do life alone. So come and be a part of do us. Let's do life together. <laughs>